What's up, you fools? Matt, ESC United, your favorite Eurovision channel. We are here in beautiful Tel Aviv, day eight. Day eight, I know we stopped, we started losing count, but we're still, I think I'm right. It's the Big Five and the host nation Israel. They rehearsed for the second time today and they are done. And it's, we're done with actually the individual stage of the rehearsal schedule, moving on to the dress rehearsals, but we'll get to that tomorrow. Let's focus on the six countries that rehearse today. Let's go for them one by one and share our favorites and our thoughts. So, yeah. Zach, let's start. The first one up again was the host nation, Israel. Yeah, despite the empty arena, um, you can tell there's going to be such good, tremendous energy from the home crowd for Kobe and company. I am so excited to see this live. I'm so excited to see that the finale, they have done an exceptional job. And I can confidently say I don't see Israel following the trend of being last as the host nation. Um, I think they have a really powerful performance yeah. and kudos to them. I hope and I feel like they're not going to be again a bottom five result for um, the host nation. Um, I, I was really emotional and both of us actually were not necessarily keen on the revamped version when we listened to it on the, you know, in the studio version, but on the stage it works. It adds that little bit of melodic melody that it needs to kind of stand out and it worked it well and Kobe is into it. He is very much into it. It has a classy feel and regardless of what you may think of the song, I think the staging suits the song and brings uh, it to strengthen it a lot. So uh, thumbs up from me for Israel. Um, who was next? France! Bilal Hassani. Wow. Shoot. Yeah, so um, most people know I had a real emotional reaction. So I didn't get to see much of the first rehearsal because I had to actually... <laughs> I actually had to leave the press center and compose myself. Just something struck me. Yeah. So I, I was actually... same thing with Israel. So, so you, but you were mad enough to stay on the live stream <laughs> where I just was like, I gotta go. Um, but for me with France, I didn't have that visceral reaction this, year, this time around. And that's not to say it's a bad thing. I think it was just the moment with the press center and everyone really buying into the story. Most of the press being gay men can identify with Bilal and his story that he had to share. I do love the fact that, you know, the song is a little self-indulgent, but he's taken the aspects of the story and really made the narrative about anyone who's had to deal with bullying, anyone who's had to deal with struggling. There are some camera angles that I think need to be worked out a bit, but there's such a good show that is being told and such a good strong message. And I know Eurovision isn't just about, it's a song contest, but when you have a message and you have a story to tell, it really does create an impactful story and performance. Yes. You know, to me, it's a song about him, Bilal, his story and his past. Now, if it's self-indulgent, may some people interpret that way, but I feel as this is him because the really cool part is at the very end of the song, this picture of him as a young kid comes up where he does his crown thing, just like in the song. And it's not just an act that he was doing that for the song. That's his thing. And that's why it comes across as authentic. And not trying to pick on France again, but the song wasn't high in my ranking. But you got to give credit where it's due. It was staged beautifully. And um, that moment when the dancer comes out, you know, the plus size lady doing her uh, dance pirouettes. or ballet pirouettes. That was what I was looking for. And then the deaf dancer also. And it's just very powerful. They changed the revamp so it suits his vocals better. It's less, you know, when his voice gets a little screechy almost when you're trying to hit the high notes that's no longer an issue so friends did what they had to to um, succeed and there's a reason why they're now third in the betting odds as the time with this recording that could change that could change well, it's also funny because I always thought the whole this thing was kind of corny and it never made sense to me I was just like really that's what they're gonna do but now seeing that whole backstory about how he's been doing this since he was a little kid really adds something endearing to it yes. and, and makes sense of it yeah. that makes sense of it it's beautiful beautifully done um, let's move on to Spain España Miki's Lavenda. Wow, I love this performance. It is so colorful, it's so impactful. Um, RTE is really wanting to redeem themselves after a bunch of piss poor showings in the past couple of years. Um, I really think they have really wanted to make something fun and explosive with this. And I always say, with your vision, you're only allowed six people on stage. How do you get a party atmosphere and how do you create that with such a stage that is going to look really empty when you only have six people on stage? San Marino figured out how to do it. Spain has figured out how to do it, if not better than San Marino. They've really created a party atmosphere that's going to build upon the fact that they're going to be in a crowded arena with the Golden Circle dancing up and down alongside with them. I think this looks great on camera. I think the viewers at home are really going to like this. 
Yes, and the camera work, this is I expected often, but it's much more slick now. Even like the last run through was better than the first two with the mannequin thing. You could see this guy walking up, the lights go off and on, or him taking it off, the mannequin thing, so you can join the dancers at the very end. That's all been taken care of. It looks really good when the when he shakes the building and the camera tilts and all the people in the building are like, oh, it was really cool. Uh, I always said, you know, Miki needs to be Miki, and I wish I would have taken one of these things out, either the GoPro thing or the the mannequin, to give him a little bit more time just to create the party the atmosphere. That being said, he still, they have more close-ups of him now, which really shows his energy that he brings. He's so charismatic, so much stage presence, and it's all coming together. I love the colors that they use on screen as well. It looks amazing, and Spain. I mean, not that it, I think it will be a best result in a very long time, hoping the juries will play along as well. After Spain, we move on to Italy, who initially dropped in the betting odds after the first rehearsal. What do you think, Zach? Uh, yeah, I think Italy still has a, a way to go. Um, you know, I've been championing my gut intuition that Italy is going to win Eurovision, but right now, with the, the camera work and everything else, I'm just not seeing it come together, and the performance is almost inhibiting what winter qualities the song itself has so I think they have to figure out they made improvements with the camera shots they're less wide wide lens shots um, but there's still something missing from the performance there's still this connection even at, at cases the back of dancers and their purpose on stage is still a bit muted and there are moments where you see they symbolize the father that that Mahmoud is talking about but there are other parts where the camera work I think is just a little questionable and I just want to see Italy get it together. They're coming in as a front runner alongside a couple other countries, but the stage performance isn't selling that yet. Yes. And um, to add a little bit more positive spin to it, it's better. <laughs> it's better than the first rehearsal, which is expected usually. Um, that there are a few more shots that are a little bit more tighter than there were before, and Mahmoud is definitely more in his zone. He was sick. You know, so he's getting better and more into it. As a matter of fact, he changed his shirt, the third uh, run through from like a white button shirt to like a, a more like a red, black, printed white stuff. So it looks way better, it looks way more Mahmoud to me with his chain, all of that stuff. So they're working on it, but it makes me nervous when you still work and haven't figured things out by the end of the second run through. We still have the dress rehearsals for them, so it is fine. But Zach summed it up, there's still room for improvement again. White shots. Too many wide shots there as well when this is a little bit more of a close-up there um, and it's uh, intense because we see like the cuts on the, there's like the screen 86 cuts i think a camera cuts i think was it that yeah yeah that's a lot and that's not everything coming together that's why it's probably not full yet but it's don't count it out yet there is room for improvement but the foundation is there that's just and let's just compare Isro, I counted 30. Yes, it was like just oh, like 36 or something like that, or something like that. It was less than that for sure. But so it's on our radar, it's not counted out just yet. So after Italy, we went on to the United Kingdom. Michael Rice rehearsing for the second time, bigger than us. You know, this is a song I kind of wrote off before and I was kind of saying, you know, I said, mark my words, read my lips in the words of George Sr., yeah. um, George Bush Sr., that is, for those of you who don't know, the American presidents or the U.S. presidents, but uh, read my lips, UK will finish last. I don't believe that anymore. There's another song that is going to finish last and we'll get to that in a second. You can figure out by now who I think that's going to be. Spoiler alert. Yeah, but I feel like the UK is really putting tremendous effort in. I don't feel like the song is the strongest song out of the 41 we're seeing this year, but I feel like they know how to take something and really make something that's going to look good on camera. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw some people saying UK potential closer going in the second half. I could see that happening. It'd be a really nice closer to the show, but there's something nice about it. There's something likable about it. And Michael's a really good performer. Like, he really gets into it. I feel like there's a lot of People aren't talking about this because he's a man doing this. If it were a woman really getting down and dirty, I think there'd be more buy-in from the press. But because he's this, you know, chubby kid from, from Britain, people aren't really buying into how good of a performer he is. And he is a tremendous performer, and we should give him credit to where credit is due. He is, he is a fantastic stage presence and stage persona. Yeah. See, that's where I actually slightly disagree with you. We finally do, because we've been agreeing the entire time. I think he's a fantastic singer. I think this, I don't find, I don't get his stage persona. I think that is the biggest disconnect with me and the staging. It seems a little bit more like someone getting really excited at karaoke at times. Not the voice. 
not the voice. He sounds amazing. Um, it's just sometimes he uh, gets really overexcited. That's these hand gestures that I find a little confusing. You know, like talking to the camera like that. So that to me, I wish he would scale back a little. I don't mind that. I like. No, I know you don't, but I'm saying I am saying that right now. <coughs> Excuse me. To me, that is definitely uh, a little bit distracting. To you, it's not. That's that's and that's perception how people feel about it. And um, but that being said, give me one second. But that being said, the um, the st the rehearsal was already way better from the first time. Now I'm also a little nervous because they had every rehearsal a little different approach. Yeah. First they used the filter, then they didn't, and then um, then they did again. No, they, they did didn't at first, then they did, and then they didn't. So that was a little nerve wracking. At the very end, they used it wisely the colors they added some really nice pyrotechnics again so if they use the very last run through of today where they don't use that stupid instagram filter where it all look, looks washed out and they add those pyrotechnics this looks way better and that to me definitely does not scream last place that's for sure father may i talk now <laughs> thank ahead. yes thank you thank you <laughs> This this is not for camera. This is really how we are in real life. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, I would rather have someone who's himself and maybe awkward or weird or eccentric on camera than someone who just literally stands in front of a microphone and doesn't emote, doesn't do anything. So maybe that's where we're different. Where I think some people it's gonna be a turn off. Some people are really gonna like this. I'm one of those people that would rather let Michael's individuality show out and shine through this performance. That's all I was gonna say. Yeah, there you go. So then the last one of the night, and of the whole event, if you will, is Germany closing the rehearsal. It's the individual rehearsal phase. Uh, the sisters. Yeah, what a what a what a way to close rehearsals. Very climactic. Um, I just don't know what to say. I mean, I've been saying that all the rehearsals looked better the second run through versus the first one. I have to now put a foot in my mouth because I think Germany just, I don't know what they did. This first rehearsal, there are components there that people were making fun of, but I almost miss them now. And as bad as those components are, when people are saying, I miss the Lazy Susan, that's not good for Germany. And Germany's just a whole bunch of blah, and it's just time after time after time that I see the same blahness with the German performances and I just I just don't get what the German delegation are thinking I mean you have two really likable girls like the duel from sister sister and it's just not giving them that opportunity to shine and it's just really saddening for me well, a lot of people are saying Germany is a potential last place now that they're also the only Big Five country to be drawn into the first half. I will say, and I was right in 2017 when I said Germany will not be last. They were second to last. Um, I'm going to say it again. They will not be last, but they will not go out of the top 20, uh, higher than the 20th place. So I really agree with everything else that you're saying. I do see a little bit more jury appeal there of the vocals and the harmonies. But beyond that, I could see a potential dead last in the televote for sure. Um, you said everything that you go ahead, sorry. I cannot imagine this doing better than it's black smoke. Just they got zero points. Exactly. Now that I don't necessarily agree with. But I do agree with the rest in that sense that the chemistry that they had, and they have chemistry didn't come across with the staging. It seems very put off and the camera angles are uncomfortable at times. And there are even times where they're like leaning against each other with the backs and the camera is actually going for the other side and they're looking into the audience and it seems uh, intended because they use the same shot every single time. They didn't uh, use another one and it bothers me to no end. And um, there's so much potential. It was just lazy staging. I feel like it. Lazy camera shots. Yes. I mean there's so much potential for this song that's just wiped away and obliterated and I don't I don't know. I don't know why they. There weren't as. I felt like there were more wide shots at this run through than the first rehearsal, yeah. and that's my biggest issue. You know, there's all these issues about wide shots this year. The delegations know what we're talking about. They know, and we've seen reactionary uh, things from the delegations based upon the press center feedback, and usually it's for the better. I, I, you know, that's one maybe good thing about the press center is that we provide feedback immediately, and the delegations are aware of it. It's almost like this delegation decided, well, we hear you, but we're going to go in the opposite direction. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about our top three real quick and our least favorite. Um, I kind of, our comf comments kind of give it away, so we'll go for real fast. Who was your third place of the day and why? Uh, I think my third favorite of the day was uh, probably, I would say, the UK. 
I did feel like there was a lot of potential there with UK. Um, I do feel like there was something there, something that uh, captivated me. Um, and it's nice to be able to say that for the UK for once. Yes. All right, there you go. My third place is France, actually. I still think it's coming together. What I liked about this performance even more than the last one is Bilal is getting even more excited. He's giving his 100% all the time. He loves your vision. It comes across. So you got to give props for that. So third place, France for me. Moving on, son. Second place. Billy's your son. Um, <laughs> my second place is France, actually. Um, I wasn't as captivated this time around with France, but I think they have a really strong performance that is going to catch the voters' attentions, both the voters and the jurors. Um, I think they're going to do a respectable job. Note I said respectable, not tremendous. I'm still not sold about where it's going to place, and a lot of press are talking about this screams winner, this screams Conchita. Remember, many of the press are gay men. They buy into the story, they relate to the story. They're going to have a more emotional response to a response like, uh, to a performance like Bilal's. So I think it's going to be left side of the board. I'm just not sold yet where it's going to stand. I have to wait until I see the ordering and the show fr uh, from beginning to end, the rehearsals. Exactly, that always helps. My second place is Spain. And it is so much fun. I pointed out before that sometimes less is more. But um, they got the camera shots together, it looks good, I get the energy, and one thing that is missing, the crowd. This is a crowd pleaser, the people will go ape bleep in the audience. And um, that energy will just catapult it to a higher level, I see the potential. Spain is the party song of the year, it deserves the credit where it's due, so my fingers and toes are crossed. Number one! All right, so I know your number one is already yeah. going to be, and that was my fourth place, um, but my number one is Spain. Uh -huh. um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I love the fact that RT is back in it. They want to predict, create something really fun, and they took that party aspect and really did something with it. I enjoyed it. Okay, there you have it. He knows my number one because my number one is actually, wait for it, Israel. Yes, today... I, I failed. I was trying to mouth along, but... Oh, really? You missed it up. No, seriously, though, and this is, of course, a personal thing. Um, it's this, out of all the performances today, it touched me the most. It really came together. Kobe didn't even, I don't think, give 100%, but he gave 90%, I think. And it's going to be even better live when there are lots of Israeli people going to be in the arena, cheering him on. It touches me. It just melts my heart. And um, it's beautifully staged. Even if you don't like the song, it is appropriately staged for the classy vibe that the song is supposed to deliver. And I think... Don't overlook Israel. I think it can do much better, especially with the juries. And I'm not even counting out the televoters. I am not. With the, with the audience, it's going to look really good. Yes, I, I it will. will give you that. Yeah. Okay, th so we still got to talk about, of course, the one that disappoints us the most. Are there any surprises? Three, two, two one. one. Germany. Germany. Yes, yeah, so, but let's talk it through. Why Germany? Is there anything else to add from what we just said? I mean, you know, I made it very clear. I felt like this is the one country where the second rehearsal did not go as well as the first rehearsal. I felt like there's a blank slate now. Yeah. The first rehearsal had a slate there, one that we didn't really agree with, with the big shots of sorry, respect, and the pictures of the women. Another story there. But um, I feel like now the blank slate is blank, and there's not really much telling me what the story is or what's going to happen. They're totally relying on wide shots. They're relying more on the wide shots of the two ladies singing yes. instead of the two artists themselves. And that's just disappointing. That's exactly how I feel. I know that the German team thinks this is what the, that was their vision. I just don't think the vision is coming together. The chemistry is lost between the singers who have chemistry and they have good voices. And as my country of birth, I want Germany to well. Then maybe I'm a little harsher on them than I should be, but I'm just really worried, especially the country that's the only one in the first half. I'm just getting really, really nervous. Maybe that's a surprise in for us, but right now, I gotta be honest, most of them improved. Germany just kind of went flat. So we do agree on that at least, but let us now watch the clips on the YouTube channel of the Eurovision One. We would love to hear from you. Are we over the top? Are we under the top? Leave your thoughts below in the comment section. Who were your favorites, least favorites? We gotta go to the orange carpet. I see you all later.